This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Yup. In four years, I made over 100 videos talking about movies from around the world. And over those four years, many viewers have also expressed interest in making videos about their native film industries. It's surreal to me that people are seeing me as an inspiration, but I guess the best thing I can do now is to help. I wouldn't say I'm an expert at it, but I have become somewhat proficient at creating videos. So, if you want to do the same, this is the episode for you. Today, let me show you the behind the scenes, a step-by-step -step quick explanation on how to be a smart ass. This is how I make video essays. Ideas are never in short supply. Some topics came from commenters and Patreon suggestions, but most are just random ideas that I'm passionate about. However, it's one thing to think of a cool topic, it's another thing to make it viable. There's a reason why I haven't talked about Malayalam films or Filipino cinema. The biggest hurdle is always finding the films in the first place. It's difficult to find foreign movies here in North America. Even when you try to torrent, the films often come with watermarks or burning subtitles or porn ads. I am not gonna use that. This is why we made so many Jackie Chan videos. His movies are just infinitely more available. Research is where the bulk of the production time is spent on. Here is the watch list I made in preparation for our videos on Jackie Chan's recent career. Watching so many videos is surprisingly mentally taxing. I have to pause to take notes. As a result, a 2 hour long movie takes me 4 hours to finish. RRR took me 3 days. At this step, I don't know what specific angle I'll approach the topic, so I'll just write down everything that catches my eye while watching the films. Writing down my complaints also helps me cope. But watching the movies alone is never enough. It's important to have a comprehensive understanding on each and every topic I want to talk about. High Risk accuses Jackie of being a fraud, so I had to look into if Jackie uses stunt doubles. Kung Fu Panda caused a debate in China, so I dug up Chinese news and reviews of the film. The Autobots was one of the most shameless movies ever made, so I had to watch cute VTubers afterwards to keep my sanity in check. These nuts. Being able to read Chinese is a big advantage. You usually see me show newspaper clippings in the videos. Those came from the research process. This is also why I feel quite uncomfortable when talking about Indian or Malaysian or Korean cinema. My ability to research is much more limited. A thesis is a statement I want to make about a certain topic. It's important that I don't make my thesis before the research, because a lot of assumptions we hold are simply not true. It would be pretty awkward to make a video about Jackie doing his own stunts, only to find out during research that he uses doubles. On rare occasions, I have such a strong emotional reaction to a film, the notes itself is more or less the entire script. Mulan is one such instance. Hatred turns out to be a great motivator. But in most cases, the process requires a lot more soul searching. I felt that Veroni Kenshin was written as an allegory. But about what? Is it about the rising tension in East Asia? The trauma of World War II? Or brewing nationalism in Japan? They all sound possible, so more targeted research has to be done. Oh joy. The more I read, the more I debunk my own interpretations until I find a thesis with strong enough arguments. It's only then I start writing the actual script. Partway through production, I also have to work on sponsorships, such as this segment, sponsored by Squarespace. So here's how I create the sponsored message. I usually like to lead with a demo website that I made. Here's one for the 100th video celebration. I then showcase the process of making said website, from choosing a template, to editing text, to uploading images. All of this takes only minutes, by the way. Other strong points worth highlighting are the robust analytic tools, the free trial that doesn't require a credit card, and the 24-7 customer support, etc. Start a free trial at squarespace.com slash cinema and use the code Axe in the Cinema to get 10% off your first purchase. I know I say that every single video, but I do record new audios for every new video. I really do recommend Squarespace to anyone who needs a website, so if you have a business or just want to show off yourself, 
give Squarespace a shot. I came from a background in fiction films, so I often frame my videos as stories rather than reports. I don't want to simply explain Tony Leung's acting techniques. I want to show the evolution of his acting style. It has to be a story about how a master improves himself. It's one thing to know how a man changed LGBT cinema. It's another thing to feel the love we have for Leslie Chen. It's not enough to know Pure Hearts is the worst movie ever made. You have to feel the existential dread. We need emotional content. Our script usually goes through two revisions: reorganizing ideas to flow better, shorten sentences, and cut out unnecessary lines. I talk pretty slowly for a YouTuber, so it's important to keep things concise. Once I have the final draft, editing begins immediately. Voiceover is the backbone of our videos. Visuals are added on top of the narration. As you can see, it's not a single continuous audio track. To further tighten the pace, once recorded, I'll go in and remove the pauses. Yeah, you can tell I'm very self-conscious. In the past, I even sped up my voice a little in post, but these days, I'm better at embracing the slowness. ASMR, am I right? When I think of YouTube, most people think of video editing, but really, editing is the most boring part. Since my notes have time codes, by the time I'm writing a script, I already know what visuals to use and where to find them. I'll just have to fill in the gaps with relevant clips I can think of. After four years, my head had become a repository for random clips. If I need a random shot of a, I don't know, cleavage, I can take that from Mysterious Island, Capri pushing Shaba inside a girl's huge shark in her hair. If you just turn your head because I said cleavage, hi, please subscribe. Our videos often contain clips from somewhere between five to forty films. Random clips just leap randomly in my head, ready to be used at any moment. That's why I don't hire editors. Finish, export. When you think it's done, it's never done. Thumbnails, video descriptions, and subtitles have to be made before publishing. A frequently asked question is how do I deal with copyright claims? In truth, other than keeping individual clips short, there's really nothing I can do. If any clips cause the video to be claimed, I have to cut it down and re-upload. The channel gets copyright claimed about twice a year. Most of the time, I dispute it, but there are times I just have to let the video go unmonetized. Captions are also particularly annoying. I can upload a script and let YouTube automatically set the timing. However, the result is always blocky and hard to read. Captions are important for viewers with hearing or visual difficulties, so it's worth the effort to manually adjust individual lines. I also have to translate them into simplified and traditional Chinese, keeping in mind the lingo differences between languages. It adds another two to three hours of work, but it's for accessibility, which, unlike YouTube, I think it is massively important. A few days before the video goes live, I post a list of films to watch in the community tab. Many viewers seem to like to watch the films ahead of our videos. It's surreal how seriously people take our channel's opinions. I'm honored. Come the day of the video going live, we have to update Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon, and I also stay active in the comments for about an hour, replying to everyone. Doesn't matter how many times I've done this, it's always the exact same feeling. I always think my latest video sucks. And your comments always make me feel like the king of the world. On average, a video takes ten work days to make, about eighty hours in total. Although I'll be honest, a couple of those hours may have been me procrastinating on Reddit. It's basically a full-time job, and indeed, I do get an equivalent of full-time pay. I used to be a wedding videographer, and the pay is a lot higher than what I get today. But I never want to go back to that soul-crushing industry. In there, nothing I do feels fulfilling. In all 100 videos, the most satisfying part is seeing people's reactions. Happy to relive nostalgic memories, delighted to discover new movies. The fact that people are excited to see their country appear on this channel is perhaps the best compliment I can imagine. I love doing this, and if you want to do this, I hope you have fun too. See you next time at Christmas. 逐梦，逐梦，逐梦，也已成全，成全，成全，成全，成全，成全。我们是纯洁，纯洁，纯洁，纯洁，纯洁的少年。